Greetings, everyone in Internet Land. I'm Mathman1024, and here today we're going to talk about multiplication by 10, 100, 1000, and so on. So, I hope that we're all ready to do this. Uh, so, before we get started, what you need to know is how to count and how to do basic multiplication. All right. So, multiplying by powers of 10 is one of the simplest things that we can do. So, if we were to take something like Four and multiply that times 10. The easy way to do this is to just add a zero at the end of that number and so you would have 40. That's it. If I take 7 and I multiply this times 10, we add a zero at the end of that and we get 70. Easy enough. And you can think about this in terms of money, right? So Oftentimes, I will convert things into money in my head so that I can have it make a little bit more sense for me. So if I put a dollar sign in front of the 10 like that, right? So this is basically saying you, if you have seven $10 bills, well, that means that you have $70. If you have four $10 bills, that means you have $40. It's as simple as that. So we can do this with multiplication of higher powers of 10. So I can do times 100. So four times 100 would be 400. And again, think about this in terms of money. So suppose you have four $100 bills, like everybody does just laying around, right? Well, that means you have, you have $400, okay? If I have 23 times 100, that means I have 2,300. And what you should be seeing here is that the zeros that I have here at the end of that number, I'm just throwing on to the end of 23. These two zeros here at the um, that I have with the 100, I'm throwing on to the end of four. And that's how you can easily multiply times 10, 100, or even bigger and bigger numbers. If I were to take eight times 1,000, we count the fact that we have three zeros here. So we end up with eight followed by one, two, three zeros. Easy as that. Even if you have something that is a little bit larger, let's say 357 times, let's take this and let's take 10,000, right? So you see that I have one, two, three, four zeros, which means that I can take the number that I'm multiplying this times, the 357, and I can add to the end of this one, two, three, four zeros. Now, as these numbers get bigger and bigger, we might want to find a different way of writing these so we don't have to write so many zeros. And that leads us into a discussion of scientific notation, but I'll save that for another video. But to help you read the number a little bit better, let's just take a moment and count from the back so we can do the groups of three, so we can do thousands, millions, and so on. So one, two, three, and three. So we can easily read this number as 3,570,000. Okay, well, let's try something a little bit different. Okay, if I have two three times 10. This gets a little bit tricky, okay? Because we have to pay attention to where that decimal place is. When you look at the examples that we had before, you might've just said, oh, we are simply adding a zero to the end of the number. Because here's what's really happening. You have a decimal point that's understood to be at the end of each of these numbers when we're multiplying them times 10 or 100 or whatever it is. And when you multiply times 10, you're basically scooting this over one decimal place, which is why it was here and now it ends up at the end to give you the 40. It was here at the end of the four and it scooted over one, two places. But when you scoot it over, but there's nothing behind it, you fill it in with zeros. So here, when I have a decimal, I have one zero, so I want to take my decimal and move it one place to the right, which turns this into 
two, three. And again, pay attention to where the decimal was. It was here. And it went one spot to the right. So this is the number 23. Remember that when you have a number that's just written without a decimal explicitly written, it's understood to be at the end. So like the three and a half million number that we have just above, the decimal is understood to be right there at the end. So what if I took 2.3 and I multiply this times 100? Because of the number of zeros that I have there with 100, I need to move my decimal place two spaces. So one space is easy. The second space, there's a bit of a gap. So that's where you would fit in a zero. So that means we have two, three, and we had to fit in a zero. And you can see what happened to the decimal. It was right here. And it goes one, two spaces to the right. So we end up with the number 230. Yep, I know you're catching on here. So what if I do 2.3 times 10, or excuse me, whew. Now my head's jumping ahead to um, scientific notation, but we're not doing that. So 2.3 times 1,000. Again, you count the number of zeros here. So we have three, which means that this decimal has to move three places to the right. So this would indicate one place to the right, two, and that would be three places to the right. So it did start right here, but you went one, two, three places, and there's my new decimal. So there doesn't have to be like this big complicated thing here when we're multiplying times 10, 100, 1000, and so on. You know what, just to make sure that we're all okay with what we have here, let me do this example. If I have zero point zero four nine, let's run through some of these examples. And if I do this times 10, well, like we were talking about before, you have one zero, which means your decimal point is going to move one place to the right. So we turn the number from 49 thousandths into 0 0.49 or 49 hundredths. So the number has grown by tenfold, and you express that by shifting the decimal one space to the right. And if I have the same number, and I do times 100. Like we've been showing in this video, you have two zeros, which means your decimal point is going to move one, two spaces to the right, which means the decimal is going to end up in between the four and the nine. So that is going to be 4.9. And you might say, but what about the other zeros that were in front of that? So these were the numbers that we had, 0, 0, 4, 9. Your decimal was right here, but you went 1, 2 to the right, putting your new decimal right there. Okay, so let's get rid of these marks where we move things. Let's get rid of that. We don't write leading zeros. Okay, so zeros that are in the front here like this, we don't need them, they're not necessary because they're only necessary if there are numbers on the other side of that. So if I had, say, a three in front, those zeros are very important because they're placeholders that will force that three to be in, in this case, the 10,000 spot, okay? But we don't have anything in front, so just having 4.9 is going to be perfectly okay, and that's all that we wanna say, okay? And you might say, well, what about in the last example where I have that zero right there. Well, the reason that I had that zero is to draw attention to the decimal point. Because a lot of times when we don't do that and we just write something like this, if I just write 0.49, it's very easy for that decimal to get lost with all the other numbers and the other symbols that you have. So what I tend to do is I put a zero here in front to draw attention to the fact that there is a decimal right behind it. All right, let's finish it off with this. Let's take 0 0.049 and let's do this times 1,000, okay? So you have three zeros, 
which means this decimal is going to go one, two, three places to the right, putting that new decimal at the end of the nine. So I don't need those leading zeros like I just talked about. So it's going to be four, nine, and the decimal is going to be right there at the end. But because it's at the end, I don't need to write that. I can just say the number 49, right? And so this is the nice, easy way of multiplying times 10, 100, 1,000, or even bigger and bigger numbers. You just have to either, like we did at the beginning, you just have to add the zeros. Or if you've got decimals, you're just going to shift that decimal point, the same number of zeros that you have following the one. And that's it. Well, I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope that it made sense for you. I appreciate you watching. And while you're here, might as well go ahead and like and subscribe and do all that cool stuff or maybe watch another video. Until next time, have fun.